All right, I've now cut off all the rail and dressed them so that they're all uh, square on the end and there's no burrs. And this is how much rail I've got left over from uh, a 36 inch piece after doing everything. And what I did as part of filing on each of these is I showed you I filed the end square and then I filed along here and then uh, I used to file along the bottom. There's some little scratches in there. I don't even see it or not. I, I want to. I want to make it so I don't feel anything at all when I do this. But the final step before I'm ready to form and solder is I take some 99% isopropyl alcohol, which I just have here, a piece of paper towel. You can use whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. And I dip the paper towel in there. And then I take each of the rails and I clean them. So this will clean off any stuff that was left on from filing. Uh, it'll make sure the bottoms are nice and clean to aid in solder flow. And overall it'll just help to clean up that. Plus if you uh, did any marking at all as you were doing your cutting with a, say a Sharpie, then this would uh, take that marking off as well as being isopropyl alcohol. It'll yeah take off stuff pretty good. Okay, and I just like to make sure they're nice and clean. I think this is the last one. And, I mean, it's not imperative that you do the all the steps that I do, but it's kind of what I technique I've involved. So you can see there the gunk that I got off on those. So, I'll do a bundle them all together and do a final clean on those. Yeah, I don't want to have solder come loose at an inappropriate time. So that's that done. We'll put the rag away. We'll put the isopropyl alcohol away. And I'm going to show you um, when you're constructing normal turnouts, you can, from Fast Tracks, you buy a jig like this. So you'll use this, which of course holds all of the ties and holds all of the rails. We don't have that luxury here, uh, but I can use parts of this. For example, to bend for the guardrails here, the little ink eh, eh, uh, on here, they have a handy little jig at the end. Uh, this is to size the guardrail for one of these turnouts. It's a regular turnout, as this is a curved turnout, it's a little bit longer. And then they have a little indentation here. And what you do with that is you take your guardrail and you slip it in a little indentation like that, hold it down with your finger and bend until it's horizontal and that puts a little bit of a bend in it. And then you do the same thing on this other side. And you just bend it so you get the little uh, ends in it like that. And then what I generally do is put it on my jig and make sure that it matches up. And that one does. So let's do the other one. Slip it in. Hold it in place. Gotta kind of hold it down with that finger, or otherwise it'll roll on you. And do the other one. Okay, looks good. And double check and put it on the layout or the paper template. Yep. Now the last thing I do with these is I like to take the approaches and file a bit of a relief in the approach, so it's not such a sharp point there. In order to do that I just take a file 
And with this kind of track, it's hard to get good strokes on something this small when you're holding it in your fingers. Oh, and your fingers will take a beating doing this. If you work at a soft desk job like I do for the first while, your fingers are going to complain. And then, so I've done that, I kind of roll it over. If you look at the fast track video, they'll show you doing this to the, um, what do you call it, the guardrails, not the guardrails. Um, these guys in here. So, but anyway, I don't know if that's visible or not, but it's rounded off, kind of in a double layer here, so it's thinner and it rounds off, so there's much less chance of anything picking it. Uh, and so I'll do that to the other end of this one and then the other one as well. So that shows the two guardrails that are kind of where they're going to be. Uh, and I also notice when I look at this, this is this is more than dry enough to work with now. And it's been oh, five, six. It's probably been an hour and between an hour and a half and two hours. It takes me a while to go through and do these and do all the cleanup. So the next thing that I like to do is I like to file all of these rather than do. Uh, some people want to do just the the main stock rails first and then they go ahead and they do the other rails. I have the, the things here from Fast Track so this is the point form 40 to 55. Now this particular one is a number 6 uh, which fits this guy perfectly however I'm building a number 8 turnout here so I'll use this to do all the forming and uh, then what I'll do is I'll hand file uh, to give it a little bit more taper, especially for the frog. I find for the points it's not so bad. And then using this stock A tool, uh, I get the notch filed into the main, uh, the main rail here. And I can file as far across here as I want, so it's not limited to any particular number. And uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you later how I file those. But anyway, I file all those as the next step. Once I've done that, I do my trial fitting of my frog. And I have this frog point frog helper, which lets me put the rail in. And you can see it's a 5, 6, and an 8. So I have an 8. And it lets me make sure that the bevel that's filed on here is appropriate and, and they're going to fit right. And then I play around with fitting that until I finally get it right and then uh, just before I solder I take a final step which is to bend them to this curvature uh, and then I put them into the frog helper do the soldering and miraculously so I'm told although I haven't tried this yet but miraculously they'll pop out uh, and retain the curve and if not I'll curve them as I have to so uh, next up I'm going to file these Actually, next up, I got other stuff to do, but when I'm back working on this, that's what I'll do. All right, first up here is we're going to file the frog. In order to do that, we loosen the screws. It says frog points to there. That means the frog goes in this way. And when you look at the end, you can see that it can only fit in one way. Now, they say that this is developed specifically for code 40 to 55, although I've done some code 80 in it as well and it seemed to work. I just have to... You need to position this guy near the end, but not too far so that you get the right angle on it. So sometimes you need to use another piece of rail just to push it through that little extra bit. And then I hold it down with my finger as I hand tighten these guys. And I use this little tool to tighten it. Now, what we're going to end up doing here is removing this part of the rail. To do that, I'm going to use three different files. I'm going to start with a coarse file that I have here. And then I have a nice long flat bastard. Okay, over here. 
And I'm going to use that as kind of the, a little bit of cleanup. And then I'm going to follow with a touch up with this smaller bastard that I have. Uh, and I'm going to do all that off camera so I'll show you later when I get done. Okay, you may not be able to tell the difference there, but I've filed just enough that those come to a point now. Now the next thing to do is to take these and put a curve in them to match what's on here. And to do that, take the first one out here. Great to have tweezers for this kind of stuff. It's going to fit there. And if you run your thumb around the inside like this carefully, you should be able to get a curve in it without getting a sharp bend somewhere. And so. It's looking pretty darn close. Uh, I'll do the other one and then uh, get me ready to solder. Okay, we're now back in the jig getting ready to solder. The last thing I'm going to do is just grab the point here and make sure that it's held together by a clamp. Okay, so I have the rail in here for the frog. I have, uh, I'm just using this as a weight. I've also gone ahead and just pinched the end together just to make sure. And then I get a little bit of flux here. Apply just a little bit of flux along the top. Okay, so I have a wire brush, just brush off the end. And the other thing I do to finalize making it nice and conductive and silver is I get a glob of saw. Well, the easiest way is to dip it in flux, point, and then put just a little bit of solder on. And then instead of a sponge, I use a brass pad and then turn it in there, and you can see how shiny silvery that is so that'll conduct heat just great so now i'll take the solder that i have and we'll go ahead and solder this in heat it apply the i don't want to applying a little extra solder here it fills in through the back Heat up enough through the front. I can see the bottom of the frog has got a little bit of solder and I can see there's a nice point to it and I haven't gotten solder in along here or along here. So what I'll do now is clean this up a bit. I get another piece of wood that I use for this. 
I'm going to use my flat bastard here. Go along the top and just remove the Not really anything there. Now normally I get in with the little guy here again and make sure that's all clean, but it is. You can see where there's a little solder deposit, so we'll get rid of that. Enjoy Stingray music free on your mobile. Now let's just put it over the layout again and make sure that it all conforms. Yeah, it's looking great on the template. So now i got to file these other guys. We'll do that next. Oh, and the last thing I do is I'll take my 99% track cleaning alcohol, take a little bit of uh, paper towel, and because I've been using rosin on this, I want to clean it off really well. Now I do a thorough clean of the turnout when I'm done building, but I'll clean it steps as well just to make sure that when I go to solder it on here it's nice and clean. <laughs> 